Hello folks, Matthew Peterson here, trainer at Pragmatic Works, and welcome to episode two of Intro to Power Platform for Educators. What we are going to learn is how we can send automated scheduled emails to multiple people without us having to do the actual email process itself. And this is all gonna be accomplished with the Power Automate program. So I've set up a scenario that my wife actually would have been thrilled to know about when she was a former educator as well. So without any further ado, let's get into it and see how it works. All right, so the scenario is my wife used to always coordinate the DC trip for 258th grade students. And she would always send an email every week to the parents reminding them of how much money they have paid and how much money is owed. Uh, however, if she would have known about this process, what normally took her an hour to do every Friday, she could have done with just one simple setup in this video uh, and never had to send out these emails manually again. So let's take a look at this data. I'm using a SharePoint list. This could work with an Excel file uh, just as easily as well, but I'm using a SharePoint list because if you have access to the Power Platform, you have access to this as well. Uh, and there's a, quite a few cool things that we can do with this as opposed to doing some more extra work inside of Excel. So what I have is a list here where I just simply have uh, the name of the individual student. So this is just a text column. I have a parent, which is a person column. We have the cost of the trip, the amount paid, and then finally, what is the amount owed? And the goal is to send an email every week letting them know how much they have paid and how much is still currently owed. So the way that this is going to be done is we're gonna come on over here to Power Automate. But as you can see, I have three different parents, Lab Admin 18, three, and 19. And again, if you weren't using a SharePoint list, you could just make a parent email column on an Excel file. So over at Power Automate, this is where, uh, this is at make.powerautomate.com. This is where you can create flows. Uh, so one way to do this is just heading over to the Create section and then choosing the type of flow. Basically, it's your trigger. So our trigger, or what is gonna kick the flow off to tell it to do its job, is going to be the scheduled flow here. And then we're gonna give it a flow name. So I'm just gonna come on in here, and I'm gonna call this, um, I usually like to tell it where I'm hooking into, so I'm hooking into a SharePoint list, and then I'm using my DC trip list, and then finally scheduled email, all right? Then we choose the repeat. Now, unfortunately, when you do a scheduled, it repeats every minute by default, so you definitely wanna change this. So for example, if I wanted this to do it every single Friday at a certain time, what I would do is I would choose week, and then I would choose the day that I want it to run. So in this case, I'll say run every Friday uh, at 10 in the morning. Then once I have that set, I go over here into create. Now this is gonna take us into what is called the flow designer. We can minimize or close out this co-pilot panel. So this right here is what is referred to as a trigger. The trigger is what is going to kick the flow off. And what we used here is a schedule trigger. Now there's other triggers where they're instant. So it would be on a click of a button, whether from a power app, which we'll learn about in this series, uh, whether it's from a SharePoint list, which we're gonna have conversation about in this series as well, or if it's waiting for something to happen on a data source, that's called an automated uh, flow. In this case, we just wanna set it up as a nice, simple, easy schedule. Now with the trigger itself, there's a few things we could modify. We did the generic setup at the very beginning, but I could come in and make uh, some few more modifications, my time zone, select different days, certain hours that I wanted to run at, the different minutes. But in this case, I'm fine with just running it every week on Friday uh, at that predetermined time. Now from here, we can close this out. We're gonna add in our first action. So when we click on add, this is gonna say, do you wanna add an action, which we definitely do. And so now we have over 1,100 different data sources and services we can use. So what we are using here is we're, we're trying to hook into our SharePoint list. So if I just type in SharePoint, and it's gonna load my results here, just being a little bit slow, I can come over here to SharePoint and then click see more. So I can see all the different actions that SharePoint can do. Now, once you start using it, you just start to know your action names. And the one that we're using here is called get items. We wanna get all of the records from our SharePoint list. So I'm gonna say, let's go get items. Now from here, we're gonna choose a, a SharePoint site. So in my case, I, I called it Mr. Peterson's class site. I then come up with the list that I wanna hook into, which you can see mine was called the DC trip list. So I'll select it here. 
Now, one of the other things we can do, and it's a kind of a best practice, is when you are adding in actions to give them um, a different name, but not different. This is more for your kind of context. So I keep the original name, and then what I also do is I then put a dash and say, returning all records from DC trip list. That way it's a little bit helpful to remind me what is it that I'm actually doing here. So that is the first part. Now there's more advanced options. We're not getting into the advanced. I want you to have a flow that you can just run right off the rip after taking or watching this video here. So that's going to be my first action. Now after we get all these items in, we can now use this data in future actions. And this is gonna be referred to as dynamic content. Now where we've been building so far is in the modern designer. However, sometimes in the modern designer, they're still working some things out and a few little bugs here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is go over to the classic designer uh, where everything is still working picture perfect. So in the upper right hand corner, I'm gonna untoggle this new designer switch. I'm gonna do a save and switch. And we're now gonna do the rest of this in the classic designer because I've seen a little bit of issues with this next action I wanna do where it's just not doing it quite right in this new style. So now that we are here, and I'm gonna minimize this so it's a little bit easier to see, we've got all the items coming back from our DC trip list. Now what we wanna do is send an email. So we're gonna click on new step. And it looks kinda of similar and I'm gonna search for send an email. And the email action I want to do is to send an email v2. So I'm going to click on it right here. Now once I click on this, the next part is who do we want to send this to? Now I don't want to hard code the person to send it to because again, the idea is that we want to send it to each, each record has their own parent email. So I want to send multiple emails, one to Matt's mom, one to Jack's mom, one to whoever's dad and so on. So if five records get returned, five separate emails should now be sent out. So to do this, when we get to the two, we use what's called dynamic content. So I'm gonna click on add dynamic content. This is where I can use any values returned from the get items in this action here. And so because I'm using a person picker column on my SharePoint list, uh, the person picker will return multiple values about the person I decide. So in this case, I want the parent and their email address that has been stored. Now, if you're using an Excel file, you just would have made an email column. So I'm gonna say parent email. Ah, now when I did this, it went to an apply to each. What in the world just happened? Well, not to get too deep into the weeds, because I wanna keep this video kind of short here. I might not be that short, but the for each is doing that idea that I said. It says, oh, you're gonna bring back multiple records that each have an email which means we're gonna to have to send multiple emails. So we're gonna do this action for each record that gets returned. So it puts it into this for each. Think of it as a, a looping action at that point. So once we have that part in, we're gonna expand out our send in email again, and then we're just gonna come up with the subject. And I'm just gonna do something like a weekly reminder of your DC trip finances. And then I'll come into the body. And now I'm going to say, all right, what do I want it to say? Well, I'll go dear. And you know what? Let's bring back the name of the parent. So I'll come over here and search for parent. But this time I'm going to use the parent display name. So again, if you weren't using a SharePoint list, you would make two columns, a parent email and a parent display name column or parent name column. So dear parent display name, um, your total, your total payments amount to, and then I'm gonna come over to my dynamic content and I'm gonna search for the amount paid column. So your total payments amount to the amount paid uh, for the total cost of the trip, which is, and then I'll come over here. This is what's great about dynamic content. So I just called it cost of trip. This means you still owe and then we have another column in here about how much they owe. You still owe whatever. Um, if you have questions, please contact me. Something like that. Very basic, very generic. Please let me know. All right, so this is what we have. And you know what? I could say your total payments as of this email amount to et cetera, et cetera. So once I have that in, I'm gonna hit save. 
Once it saves, it's going to say your flow is good to go. You should, we recommend that you test it. Now the flow checker, don't worry about this. This is just saying, hey, you're retrieving items. Um, the more items that you return, the longer this flow will take. Maybe you want to filter. In this case, we don't want to filter anything out because we want each parent to get this email. So I'm going to close this out and then I'm going to come up here and hit test. Now I don't technically have to test it, but it's a good idea to test before you do anything. Um, so I'm going to click over here. I'm going to say, I want to test this manually. And then I'll come on down and click this test here. And then I'm going to run this flow. And then I'm going to wait for it to pop up. And we will see here is the first one. Bring this on over here. So right here it says, Dear Lab Admin 19, your total payments of this email, 110132, trip is 1200, you owe 9868. If you have questions, please let me know. So that was to the Lab Admin 19, which I'm currently not logged in as Lab Admin 19. You can see I'm logged in as Lab Admin 18. So in a separate uh, browser, I logged in as the separate account. But we can see that for the lab admin 19, those were their exact values. And I could have brought in the, the student name here as well. So now let me bring in the other email that came to the lab admin 18. And I'll bring this in here and bring it back, show you. It says, dear lab admin 18, your total payments of this email amount to $500 for the total cost of the trip, which is 1200. So what we have now seen is that this is sending out multiple emails to each and every person that is in here. Now, we might not like, you know, it didn't put the dollar sign in front, so we could go in front and put the dollar sign in front of that dynamic content if we wanted to. We're gonna learn later in our series how we can use formatting features to bring it back as certain currency, number, date, data types. But hopefully this one gets you started off. And again, this was just for a DC trip, but if you have an idea of where you wanna send weekly reminders and you have the data stored somewhere, all you got to do is just point the flow to that data source, say return those items, set up that send email action, and then you are off to the races. So lots of use cases for this, but I think this one is a really easy or nice one for uh, teachers to know about. So hopefully you enjoyed. Stay tuned to the rest of this series. We're going to do a lot of these easy one offer things here. As we move throughout, we'll start to make them a little bit more advanced, but this is our first one. So hopefully you are success, successful uh, and hopefully enjoyed. If that is the case, then I will be seeing you in the next one. And don't forget to like, subscribe so you can stay up to date on all of our videos we do here at Pragmatic Works. Thanks so much.